Today I'm going to go over the standard configuration I do on a brand new Raspbian build. Uh, what I have is a Raspberry Pi 2. This should work on a Raspberry Pi uh, 1 also. And then um, for an SD card I have a Samsung Evo 16 gigabyte micro SD card uh, with just a standard Raspbian image on it. Um, there are many tutorials online on how to install those images so you can look at those but this is once you get the image installed this is the configuration setup that I go through. Um, this may not be of interest to uh, experts um, but uh, if you do watch this and you are an expert and you have advice or things you want to share please leave those in the comments and uh, if you're a beginner you can go ahead and read the comments and see what other people may be saying. So uh, when you first boot up the Pi you're going to get to the uh, raspy-config screen and uh, we'll do some configurations on here, but first I'm going to exit out of here and I'm going to change the font so it's easier to read. So I'll type in sudo space dpkg dash reconfigure space console dash setup. And then I'm going to choose the defaults for most of these settings. I'm going to choose UTF 8. Uh, guess optimal character set. Do not change the boot font. Uh, we're going to change that one to Terminus Bold. Now these are going to be different console typefaces. I'm making this large for this video. You could uh, choose a different font if you'd like or you leave it with the default font. I'm going to choose 1632 frame buffer only and hit OK. So now as you can see the font's a little bit bigger here. Now I want to go back into raspy config so I'll type in sudo space raspy dash config enter and I want to go through uh, a number of setup options on here. The first I'll hit expand file system and this will essentially set a flag uh, so next time we, we reboot, it will expand the file system. Uh, right now, you don't have access to all of the uh, space on the SD card. Uh, you can change the user password if you want to do that. Uh, you can boot into the desktop or the console. I'm going to keep it uh, booted into the console, but if you want to uh, have this boot into the graphical environment, uh, then you can change this using this option. Next is internationalization options. Uh, first we'll change the locale. Um, this is set up right now for Great Britain uh, by default and I'm in the US so I want to uh, change this. I'm going to look for EN for English and I'll see this EN GB UTF 8. I want to unselect that by hitting the spacebar and then I'm going to scroll down to EN US UTF 8 and I'll hit spacebar to select that. And uh, for navigation here, I'm using the, cons, uh, the cursor keys, and I'll hit tab to go to the OK. If I want to go to cancel, I can hit the right arrow key or the left arrow key. It's pretty intuitive to get around this. Um, next, it'll ask me to choose the default locale, so I'll choose uh, ENUS UTF-8, and I'll hit OK. To be honest, I don't know exactly what the uh, locale uh, configures, but I like to set it for my uh, personal location. Uh, next, I'm going to change the time zone. I forgot to mention I'm plugged into Ethernet right now to the internet. So uh, when you're plugged into Ethernet, it will go out and get the time uh, from a time server. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have its own uh, real-time clock, uh, so you have to reset the time every time you restart it. Uh, for time zone, I'm going to pick U.S., because so that's where I'm at. Then I'm going to pick Central Time Zone. That's pretty easy. Um, I'm going to go back into inter internationalization settings, and I'm going to go to Change Keyboard Layout. And this one's pretty important, because uh, right now the keyboard is set up uh, with Great Britain uh, in mind. And when I try and type a double quote or an, uh, an at symbol, the, those two keys are reversed. So... Um, this will fix that problem. So I'm going to choose the generic uh, 105 key keyboard. I'm going to hit OK. And then the keyboard layout right now says English UK. I'm going to choose Other. 
and then I'm going to choose English US and then I'll scroll to the very top here and it has a uh, English US uh, without any other um, anything after it I'll hit OK I'm going to choose the defaults for most of these And that'll fix my uh, key mapping. So now when I type on the keyboard, it'll do what I expect it to do. If you have a camera, you can enable the camera here. I don't have a camera on this specific Pi. Uh, you can add to the uh, Raspberry Pi online map. I typically don't do that. I have in the past, but um, you can go to overclock settings. If you want to overclock your Pi, this is a very easy way to do it. We'll go to overclock. And I'll typically choose the uh, Pi 2 setting. Hit OK, and uh, you have to wait to restart for that to take hold. And then we'll go into Advanced Options. Uh, one thing I want to do is disable Overscan. Um, I don't know if it's uh, obvious on this YouTube video, but there are, is a black box around this video. So I'll hit Overscan, and I'm going to tell it to disable Overscan. And when I reboot, it will fill in the whole screen. So I'll go back to Advanced Options. You can change the host name on your Pi. This is useful if you have multiple Pis. Um, so I'll change this to Desktop Pi. Hit OK. Go back into Advanced Options. And then I'll go to SSH. And I tend to like to have an SSH server uh, enabled on this so I can access it from one of my other computers. So I'll hit Enable. And that will enable SSH. So this is the basic raspy config uh, configuration I'll do. I'll hit finish. And it'll ask me if I want to reboot, and I'll say yes. Okay, so now we have the login prompt. We'll type in pi, which is the default username. And I haven't changed the password, so I'll type in raspberry. And we'll have a console. Um, you, you may be able to see this on the YouTube video, but the text goes all the way to the edges now. So um, now that I've done the main config, I want to do some updating. So to do that, I'm going to type in sudo space apt-get update and hit enter. And what apt-get update does is it uh, there's a list of the packages on the Raspberry Pi, and this updates those, uh, so it'll, uh, the Raspberry Pi will know um, the latest versions of all the packages. So this isn't updating the uh, packages themselves, it's updating the list of packages. Next I'll type in sudo space apt-get dist dash upgrade and I'll hit enter and it will list out the packages that need upgrading and I'll say yes to continue so it's comparing the list we downloaded with the currently installed packages it sees that uh, there are some that need to be updated and uh, now it's downloading those packages and updating them We've now updated all the packages on the system, so now I'm going to update the Raspberry Pi firmware. To do that, I'll type in sudo space rpi-update and hit enter. And this will download and install the latest firmware. Okay, now that the firmware is updated, I'm going to install a package called uh, Avahi Daemon. So I'll type in sudo space apt-get space install vahi dash daemon I'll hit enter. What this will allow you to do is to access the Raspberry Pi using a local DNS um, kind of host name thing and uh, you can use these names between multiple Pi's uh, that are running the vahi daemon or uh, on a Mac because the Avahi Daemon is going to set up a zero conf uh, configuration on the Raspberry Pi. There, are, I think there are also zero conf, um, there's software on Windows, but I don't know uh, which packages those are, but yeah, I'm sure you could Google for them. 
but I'll demonstrate it here in just a second. Okay, so now that I have everything set up and updated, I'm going to reboot the Pi. You mostly need to reboot if you've updated kernel packages and such. Um, I actually wasn't paying attention to what computer anyway. Okay, so I'll log in. Pi. Password Raspberry. So the host name of this uh, Raspberry Pi is Desktop Pi, as we changed it in the Raspberry config. Uh, so now what we can do is we can type in ping desktop pi dot local. And that will ping this local uh, Raspberry Pi. If you're on another uh, Raspberry Pi or a Mac um, that is running Avahi Daemon or just a Mac in general, you can also just type desktop pi dot local and it will find this machine. Um, so this is uh, very helpful if you're doing things like running a web server uh, on your local network and you don't want to have to type the IP address in uh, every time. You can use this to uh, assign the Raspberry Pi a local um, name that uh, can be routed with inside the network. So um, if you're new to Raspberry Pi, I guess I could go over uh, getting into the graphical environment. Um, uh, when you're on the console, you can type in start x. Not sure what this error is, but I'll hit OK. Um, once you uh, do that, you'll get the graphical environment here. Uh, you can open up a web browser and such. But I don't do much uh, to the graphical environment. I use it occasionally, uh, but I don't do a lot of customization on it. I keep it as is. If you want to leave the graphical environment, you can go to shut down and then say log out, and it'll take you back into the console. So, uh, if you have any questions about uh, my setup, please leave them in the comments. And if you have any advice, certainly I'd love to hear that too. So, uh, put that in the comments as well. If you like this video, please click that like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.